Recall from chapter three, when we left our processor, uh, we wanted to get our temperature up to 135. As we have left it, we're right now at 136, which is acceptable. So from this stage, we're going to prepare our methoxide carboys and uh, get ready for our reaction. So using the equation from uh, ch the end of chapter four and value V, we're gonna progress now to preparing your methoxide solution. Now that our temperature has been verified to be at the optimal point, the next step is getting our carboys ready for the introduction of methoxide. Carboy is nothing more than a five gallon container that has been metered per directions at Utah Biodiesel Supply. It's very important that you meter these correctly. We want to get our exact amount of methanol into the reaction. We use a 22% value, 22% uh, methanol to oil in the system. This guarantees that you get all your glycerides reacted. Our goal in ASTM specs, you need about 98, a little over 98% to meet ASTM specs. Therefore, we use 22%. We use 22% on peanut oil, cottonseed oil, soy oil, uh, canola oil. Um, every oil that we've come across, 22% is a good value and it gives us our full 98 and above reaction. So at this time, using our two carboys, we're going to introduce uh, our meth methanol. We're going to pump methanol into these. But before we do that, let's find out exactly how much methanol we have to do, have to pump into the system. In order to do that, we're going to shut off our reactor at this time and uh, look at our exact value for oil. That will allow us to calculate our exact amount of methanol to introduce into the system. So I'll turn these off and allow them to settle for, I don't know, a couple minutes. It won't take that long. So if we want to bring the camera over here, we'll uh, show you the exact amount of methanol to put in. Our site tube here has been metered at 150, 140, 130, 120, 110, 100. Actually, it goes down to 60. You may or may not be able to see this on the tape, but our 120 value is right here. And now that it's settled for a couple minutes, we have 121 liters of oil in this system. We're going to use that number for a number of calculations here on out for this processing, this process reaction. So with 121 in mind, let's go do some math and find out how much uh, methanol we need to introduce into the system. At this time, we're going to calculate the amount of methanol to be used within this reaction. This equation is fairly simple. X times 0.22 equals Y, where X is our oil in liters and Y would be our total amount of methanol in this reaction. As previously stated, we use 22% methanol per value of oil. That's the 0.22. So if we plug in our values, which we just recorded, our X value is 121 liters. Plug this into our equation, 121 liters times 0.22 equals y. This will come to 26.62. We'll round this value, y, to the nearest half liter to 26.5. That is the exact amount of methanol we want to split between, between both carboys. Depending upon how much oil is within your processor, this value Y will, be, uh, will vary between reactions. Um, 120 to you know, that area, you should get about 26. Um, at this point, we are going to find out how much methanol we put into each carboy. And that's a pretty simple equation too. It's Y divided by 2 equals amount of methanol per carboy. And we'll call this value Z. So Z in this case will be 26.5 divided by 2, which comes to 13.25 or 13 and one quarter liter per carboy.
So we just calculated the amount of methanol to be pumped into each of these carboids. And that value Z for this particular reaction, written here in my notebook, came to 13.25. So 13 and a quarter liters of methanol will be pumped into each of these vessels. If you pump 13 into one and 13 and a half into another, that's fine. You want to try to get 13 and a quarter. With biodiesel and this system, it's okay to go over. It's okay to go 13 and a half when you need 13.25. What you don't want to do is go under. Now, if you look at the stoichiometry of biodiesel reactions with certain types of oils, you'll discover that that's about 22% is about twice as much as the actual reaction needs. But in order to complete the reaction to 98% and above, which is our goal, we flood the system with a 22% methanol reaction. That doesn't guarantee, but it almost solidifies the fact that you're going to uh, allow that reaction to go through by giving the glycerides the possibility of reacting with the methanol. You'd have to run your reaction a lot longer um, for a longer duration if you use exact stoichiometric uh, um, amounts, like in the teens, like 12, 13%, depending on what type of oil you're using. That's why we use 22% methanol. So here we have a little 16 gallon drum of methanol and a really simple plastic hand siphon. Now we want to take off this three quarter inch bung here so we don't cause a vacuum. And uh, we'll begin our hand pumping of our methanol into our system. And this goes fairly well. Make sure that this is screwed down and we just begin the siphon action. You know what? Safety first. Always be sure that you're wearing your safety goggles. Methanol is a poison. You don't really want to breathe this in either, so. We have a fan going on back there that's pushing any vapors out, so. You just continue this process. And our 13 mark is right here. So let's keep pumping, and we'll come back when we reach near that mark. Okay. Notice that we have pumped in 13 and a half liters into this vessel. And right now we've got 12 and a half into here. So our goal is to get 26.5. So we're gonna have to pump just a little more into this guy. I want to get this up to 13 and we'll be happy. A couple more pumps. Here we go. So roughly 13.5 per container averaged, 13.25 average, 13 and a half, and 13. And that's acceptable. You don't want to have 17 and, and uh, what would that come out to? 17 and 9, stuff like that. Try to get it as best you can. Just make sure that your total value is your initial value of Y, which in this case is 26 and a half, which we have done. So we're going to cap these, put them aside for one second while we prepare our sodium hydroxide. Now that we've calculated our total methanol to be used within this reaction, we're going to calculate the amount of sodium hydroxide. The amount of sodium hydroxide is, is dependent upon your titration value. If you recall from chapter four, for this reaction, our titration value was 1.2. B equals 1.2. Using this value, we're going to need, we're going to use a little bit more complicated equation but uh, this is the equation you need to use to calculate the amount of sodium hydroxide. And it starts as such. X, which is your value of uh, the amount of oil in your system, times 5, plus X times V, all together, divided by your percentage purity of your sodium hydroxide will yield our final value T. So let's simplify this a little more. 
plugging in our values, x, not yet, we'll plug in x later, x times i plus x times 1.2 divided by, now percentage purity, which is available on your MSDS sheet for your particular sodium hydroxide, um, ours is 97%. So 97 is 0.97, so 0.97 will yield T. Simplify this equation a little bit. We'll get 5x plus 1.2x divided by 0.97 equals t. Further, 6.2x divided by 0.97 will equal t. Now we plug in our value for oil, which is x, that came to 121, so 6.2 times 121 liters, divided by 0.97 equals t. So we'll use our calculator. Six point two times one hundred and twenty one is seven hundred and fifty point two. Because our purity is only ninety seven percent, we we divide that number by point nine seven and we get seven fifty point two divided by point nine seven. And this should be a greater amount. And it is 773.4. And we'll just round that up to 700, actually it'll round down, 773 equals T. So T equals 773. That is the amount of total sodium hydroxide you want to introduce for this particular reaction. Now that we know the total amount of sodium hydroxide to be introduced into our system, we're going to find out how much sodium hydroxide to put into each carboy. This is also a very simple equation. T divided by 2 is going to equal N, and N is the amount to be put into each carboy. So we calculated before, 773, divide that by 2, and we will get N, and that is the amount each carboy. NaOH, sodium hydroxide, per, per carboy. So, get our calculator out once again. Three hundred and eighty-six point five equals N. That's the amount of sodium hydroxide. We want to calculate into each carboy. At this time, we're going to use our scale, which is accurate to one gram, to uh, put this value into each carboy. We just transferred 26.5 liters of methanol into our carboys. Now we want to measure out exactly 386 and a half grams of sodium hydroxide, 97%, which is right here, into each of those carboys. So safety first, my goggles are on. We're going to put on the gloves. It should be noted here, again, we want to get as close as we can. We want to get 386.5. This scale that we're about to use only goes up it only uh, is accurate within a gram. So if we get 100 or 386 in one carboy and 387 in another, that is going to equal our total 773 grams, which is our target goal. So the total goal is 773. We want to average that as best we can with the with the equipment that we have here. So we are right now using a coffee filter and we will be pouring our sodium hydroxide in there. So let's turn on our scale. 
and we're going to zero it out. So it's zeroed out. And now we're going to go over here, open the bar. Remember, we want to keep this open for as little amount of time as possible. This is granulated and it's pretty fine. So, with our scale at zero, you may have to split this up into a couple pores. Ooh, look at that. 238. And I think I'm just going to stop right there and pour this into our first vessel. Taking note, carpoy one. Number one, 238 grams. So 386.5 minus 238. Our next pour will be 148 and a half. So from here, pan out. I'm going to pour the contents of this into our first part. Once you introduce this, sodium hydroxide to your methanol, it's going to start its reaction. One of the byproducts of this reaction, well there's three, this reaction in, uh, increases heat, there's a heat of, heat of reaction. There's also some vapor pressures it will be created in this process. And unfortunately, there is going to be a little bit of water created in this process. So I'll demonstrate. I'm going to twist this around. And you can actually hear the pressure build up when we release it. So that's, we know our reaction's occurring. But we still need to introduce an additional 148 and a half. grams of sodium hydroxide. So V0. This coffee filter is going to be a little tricky. Okay, we went a little bit above, went to 153. That gave us a total of one, nine, 391 grams in this first carpet. So once again, transfer. So you may be wondering why that five in the, in the equation for calculating the sodium hydroxide came about. It's in the first part of the equation, x times five plus your titration value V times X. And uh, we know the X's come from our site tube and how much oil is in our reaction. The five is a baseline. If you had a vegetable oil, straight vegetable oil, five would be the amount of grams per liter you use. The titration number is your evaluation of how much free fatty acids are within your system. And we add that amount on top of our five. Some processes use less sodium hydroxide. Some recommend 3.5. We use a wash system, which purifies the biodiesel after the reaction. Again, just like the methanol with using 22%, we put more sodium hydroxide in this reaction than is absolutely necessary um, for the reaction to occur. We want to push the possibility of doing a full reaction to its fullest extent in order to get our 98% reaction. So now that this, this carboy been filled and introduced. We're going to shake it up. And release the pressure. Do this in a well-ventilated area. And that is good. We'll let that sit and we'll fill this with uh, 773 minus 391 grams, just like we did before. And we'll cut back a few when this one is filled as well. All right, we put 383 grams of sodium hydroxide in this carboy. Again, this is how you mix them. And we're going to keep coming back to this. Every five minutes or so for about four or five times you're going to have to do this. 
then release the pressure. And that's how we uh, mix our sodium hydroxide. You'll know that you can actually see it, possibly, on the bottom, maybe not with the video, but we can actually see it on the bottom here. So you know that your reaction is done when all that sodium hydroxide at the bottom is dissolved. Just keep doing that, and we'll be back about every five minutes, and we'll repeat that with our gloves on. When it's done, that's what we'll take up the video from here. But just, you can pick these up and look and see the bottom. And you can see some granules there. You might not be able to on the video, but you'll be able to see them. Be sure to wear your safety equipment. Cool. So we'll see you in about 10 minutes. We'll just keep doing this and uh, wait till our sodium hydroxide is fully dissolved. We have uh, agitated these and dissolved all of our sodium hydroxide into our methanol at this point. Uh, agitated about three or four to five times, depending on when uh, your solution is, is uh, totally dissolved. And you can tell because after you agitate any more, any further agitation is not going to release any pressure. And when you lift this above eye level, you can no longer see granules at the bottom of these containers. It should be noted, your safety in handling chemicals is, is your responsibility. We can show you the basics, but you really should review your MSDSs and really be careful while handling these things. We can't be liable uh, for mishandling um, of chemicals on your side. So really pay attention, uh, be smart, be safe, do whatever precautions are necessary to make sure that uh, you and anybody around you is safe as well. Um, read your MSDSs and follow those directions as well. This is the most dangerous of all of our chemicals that we use, is this methoxide solution. So be especially careful when handling this. Um, at this time, we are concluding uh, chapter five. We have our uh, methanol and uh, sodium hydroxide into a methoxide solution right here into these two containers. Um, our values calculated from chapter four and uh, earlier in chapter five um, have all been introduced into these two carboys. At this time, um, we'll move on to chapter six, which is the introduction of your methoxide solution into your processor. We'll see you then. Let's begin with chapter six, the introduction of methoxide into your processor. Since we left it at the end of chapter three, when we did our titration in the beginnings of chapter four, we left our circulating pump on and heating on the pump on inside your processor slash reactor. Verify again that uh, we're operating at 135 degrees, which we are precisely on. It was at 136 a few minutes ago. So it's right at our target range of temperatures for a number of reasons that we stated before. 135 is exactly where we want it to be. Also note, that right now, our site tube has been drained of its liquid. That's because our processor has, you know, started its process, caused a little vacuum in here, and uh, we want to turn off this right now. So close site tube, valve number two. This keeps all the liquid within the re processor reactor itself. If you leave this open, there's a possibility that some uh, liquid gets trapped within this area. When that happens, all that oil in there will no longer be a part of the reaction process, and, and that's not desirable at all. Our goal, again, is to reach ASTM D6751 standards. So we want to put all of our oil in the reaction process. This prevents it from flowing up this uh, tube here and uh, missing out on the excitement of the reaction. So now that site, uh, valve two, the site tube is closed, and we're at 135, I'm gonna grab one of our methoxide carboys, and note, this one, has our banjo attachment to it. We're going to bring this right over here. Okay, with our methoxide solution right here on our trusty table, this is the this is the uh, valve connector that opens up to valve number five. We're going to remove our stopper for our methoxide solution, and very carefully tip this until it's securely attached. Now we're also going to release that cap. The reason why we do this is that we don't want a vacuum to collapse this, this methoxide container when the solution is introduced. Okay, 
So now we're going to bring the camera back around here, and I'll show you how to open up valve number five. All right. Also, from this angle, you can see valve two better. This is, again, closed. Make sure that it is. Now we'll open up valve five, introducing the methoxide solution into our processor. You want to open it up about halfway. You can open it faster and drain it all real fast, but that's not really what we want to do. We want to introduce it within a couple minutes. Notice that our, uh, our processing tube, our uh, circulating tube right here, is turned a milky, kind of uh, sort of like, uh, I don't know, a foamy, sort of the top of a root beer float. It's kind of a foamy, white, pale, pale tan color. That's probably ideal. That means it's reacting at this point. So we're just going to open this up. Actually, we're going to go to about three quarters. And let's go look at our methoxide carpoy over here and watch it drain. See that it's draining at a nice steady rate. And we're going to want this to flow out of there just as it is, slowly being introduced to the processor, kind of getting a homogeneous solution uh, to be mixed well with inside the vessel itself. So we're just going to let that drain. And I actually can open up a little bit more. So you don't have to watch this, but I'm opening up just a little tad more, increasing the rate which it uh, is being drawn into the system. But that's a pretty good rate right there. It'll drain. Total time to put in is about two to three minutes. You can go slower, you can go faster. Two or three minutes is we found to be consistent with getting ASTM standards, so we stick with that. We stick with that uh, time ratio. So if you open up your valve totally and it's kind of slow drain like this is, you can actually come back around towards valve five and have it draw a little bit faster by slowly closing valve number four. Now this causes a little bit more pressure to be drawn out of this, this valve here. If you closed it fully, it would suck right out immediately at a very high rate. We can just restrict it and kind of play with the fluids being pulled by restricting valve four. You can see that's, that's having its desired effect. Here's where the handling, back over here towards our carpoy. This is where the handling of our solution is, is important. Kind of have to hand draw it in. And you really want to get all of that stuff in there. Being careful not to spill any. This is highly toxic and, and dangerous, so please be careful in this, in this part of the process. Good. Okay, so now that we have drained our carpoid fully, place it back down, close valve five, put valve four back to the fully open position, and just like before, we're going to swap out the carpoid. Cap back on our carpoid. I'm going to take the top off and use that on our other part. Here. These banjos sure are nice. Now we're done with this guy. We're going to put it on the here in our handy made station. Put that back on, and as before. Attach. Carefully attach. On that box side too, taking off the cap again, and gently placing it in that position. And again, we're going to open valve 5, drawing our methoxide solution into the reaction.
And if you're having trouble drawing it in, we'll restrict valve number four again, causing it to work. See how that works? And now that we're drawing, we back this off just a little bit. And it'll take a couple minutes. And we'll stick with the camera on just to make sure you understand fully how this works. Again, by restricting valve four, you increase the draw from valve five. So if you fully close that, you could draw it all really fast. I'll demonstrate that. You don't want to really do this, but this way you're pulling as fast as possible. You can notice your solution being drawn um, out of that carboy at a really fast rate. You don't really want to do that. Um, you want to keep four at about halfway. See how I'm closing four, it slows that down. So we're at about half four now. And we will re tip this. No spills, a clean draw. Now we close valve five. Done, open valve four fully, allow full circulation of our chemicals. And the last step, the most important step, is this. Valve number 11. That is located on the back of our processor. Just like site two, number two valve, could have been closed when you introduced your oil to your processor. Valve number 11 should have been open the entire time until now. Valve number 11 closes your processor into a closed loop. This keeps it all self-contained. You're not going to lose any methanol vapors after the methanol and sodium hydroxide and methoxide solution has been introduced to your uh, processor. Close valve 11 at this time. You will open this after the processor has reacted its contents in about three and a half hours. Our time right now is 3.45, so we will see you back here at 7.15, and that's when we will turn off our processor. We run our uh, processes at three and a half hours, period. Um, at 1.35, three and a half hours will give you your 98% or above reaction using this system. So at this time, um, I'd like to thank you. Uh, this is, we just made a biodiesel. This, this process we just introduced is making biodiesels, making fatty acid methyl esters as we speak. Uh, it takes a little while, but it's really cool. We just made fuel. Um, we'll verify that in following chapters 7, 8, 9, and in 10, we'll show you uh, uh, quality assurance and uh, how to pump it into your vehicle. But uh, I'd just like to thank you again once again. Thanks. And if you hear this movie in the background, those are cicadas or locusts. So don't, don't call back in and say, hey, your, your video has a lot of these weird buzzing. We have nothing to do with that. That's the, that's the locust. So have a great day, and we'll see you back here at 7.15. So it's 7.15, and we are done running our three and a half hour reaction time. When I mentioned the 80 or the 98%, what that means is, a perfect reaction will be 100% conversion of, uh, of your glycerides into biodiesel. ASTM spec lets you have a window of 2%. So what we want to do is shoot for that 98 and above percent. That's why we uh, recommend that you run your processor at 135 degrees for three and a half hours. That maximizes your ability to convert those glycerides into uh, fatty acid methyl esters. So at this time, um, we're going to shut off the circulating pump and the internal heating element, and we're going to let this system, and we're going to let the contents of this uh, vessel here settle for at least 12 hours. Optimal, you want to, want to settle for a little more than that. 18 hours is great. The longer you settle, the better your separation. So at this time, uh, we'll conclude Chapter 6. I'll turn this off. and. Uh, in for us, it'll be about 18 hours. We'll be moving on to uh, chapter 7. We'll see you then.
All right, welcome back. It's been over 12 hours, and we are ready to drain our glycerol and uh, transfer our biodiesel to our wash station. Now, what has happened here is that we've created two products, methyl ester and glycerol. Glycerol has a specific gravity of 1.24, right around that area. Biodiesel, methyl ester has a specific gravity of about 0.86 to 0.88, right in that region. So what happens is your glycerol is going to separate and uh, sink to the bottom of this uh, this processing tank, while the glycerol is going to, or the, the methyl esters is going to be uh, setting above it. So what we want to do is drain the glycerol out and uh, then transfer the methyl esters to the wash station. Remember how we closed valve 11 during the the last stage of introducing our methoxide into this? Well, this is a closed system right now. And we're going to have a little bit of vapor, vaporized methanol in here. So at this time, you're going to want to open up valve 11. You're going to hear, uh, you're going to hear kind of the, the inside of the processor re-pressurized uh, atmospheric. So here we go. Right there. We'll get a little vapor drop in there possibly. Maybe not. That's good. If you don't open up valve 11, when you attempt to drain your glycerol from valve 6, like we're going to do right now, with valve 11 closed, it's going to glug. It's going to, it's going to glug and it's going to cause air bubbles to go in there. It's going to mix up your glycerol and your biodiesel again. You don't want to do that. So open up valve 11, and uh, right now we're going to put on some more gloves, and uh, we'll commence draining from valve 6. Uh, keep in mind, too, at this stage, you're going to be exposing yourself to methanol vapors. Keep a fan handy and uh, ventilate your area well. Uh, you don't want to inhale methanol, it's a poison. It'll, uh, enough of it will make you blind and even more than that will kill you. So be very careful with your methanol. So I'm going to find some gloves and we'll see you back here in about 10 seconds. Got our gloves on. Follow the instruction manual, the SOP manual, and uh, the next stage is drain your auxiliary tank of glycerol that's in it. We want to drain it down to about one gallon. So, in order to drain this, we're going to unscrew the top. And we've got a dedicated five gallon bucket here, aptly named glycerol, crude glycerol. And uh, now we're open here. We're just going to drain the contents, opening valve 13. Now, this is high concentration. Um, there's some methanol and uh, some sodium hydroxide in this glycerol. So don't breathe in. Have your fan running. And absolutely no lighting matches, no welding, no smoking, no sparks, flames, or anything like that when you're doing this process. So that's about one gallon left. So we'll shut that off. While that continues to drain, we're going to open up our 55 gallon drum here. Again, because your glycerol has methanol in it, you want to keep this thing sealed. Otherwise, your methanol is going to evaporate the atmosphere, and in a closed environment such as this, it's not safe, and it's not a good idea. So, be careful not to breathe. You just take the contents of your glycerol and put in this container. In the supplementary information guide, we'll tell you suggestions on how to uh, deal with your glycerol. Because you're going to end up with about 10 to 20 percent co-product of glycerol. Meaning, for every 10 gallons of biodiesel you produce, you're going to produce about 10 to 20, or 1 to 2 gallons of glycerol. Okay, secure, safe, and now we'll go back to our SOP. And that is, since valve 11 is open, we're going to start to drain. We want to get a better angle on this. We're going to start to drain the glycerol from our processor. So we had about 33 gallons in there, 32. So we're expecting to pull anywhere from three to six gallons of glycerol out of here. So you'll know 
when you start draining biodiesel because the properties and the color is going to change and the viscosity is going to change too. The glycerol is basically a really dark black, chocolatey black liquid. It has really unique uh, lubricity properties too when you rub between your fingers. We'll usually go through about three buckets this size. about a gallon and a half in there. Like I said before, if you don't close valve, if, if you don't open valve number 11, this is going to go glug, 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 and it'll mix glycerol into your biodiesel layer. And then you have to let it sit for another eight hours. So save yourself a headache, open valve 11. one more. It's going to vary depending upon the quality of your oil. Now we use this auxiliary tank in our next step once we hit the biodiesel layer. And we really recommend the auxiliary tank because we want to get all of our glycerol separated from our biodiesel. And the most efficient way to do that is to use the auxiliary tank. And we'll show you exactly how that's implemented here once we hit our biodiesel layer. We get a little bit intermixed right now. We're real close. We're, we're actually hitting that intermixed layer, but we'll see a definitive change here in just a second. You can see, if you see that separation there, we're actually pulling a little bit of biodiesel that's already coming out. Yeah, we're right in that mixed layer. But, I'm gonna have to dump this in. this one more time. So we repeat this process of draining and dumping into our 55 gallon glycerol uh, drum over there until we get to about this stage. And that's when we turn it on and we're going to go into the biodiesel layer. You see, see how the color just changed? It went from black to tan. We're in that intermixed layer, but uh, we're definitely pulling more biodiesel than glycerol. And this is the great thing about our auxiliary tank. We'll just pull off. I don't know. A gallon or two. We try to put to use all the biodiesel we can. We got a mixture of stuff in here. Okay. 
Well, that's pretty good. Here's how we implement the auxiliary tank. And all this for demonstration purposes. I'll show you. We're gonna let this sit for, I don't know, a minute or two. And uh, we'll come back and we'll see a definitive change in, in uh, the layers. Yeah, I might pull this a little bit more off, but I want you to be able to really see that change. So, getting all the glycerol out of the system. So we'll come back in a couple minutes and look at this bucket. And you'll see the separation between the glycerol and the biodiesel just within this bucket. And then we're going to pour it into our auxiliary tank. So we'll come back in a couple minutes. All right, we have let this sit for about 10 minutes. And uh, by tipping it using a flashlight, and I'll show you, you can tell where, here's our biodiesel, and then we're going to transition right there into our glycerol. So you see a definitive change right there. That's where the transition occurs. It's easier to see the transition and the distinction between your biodiesel and your glycerol right here in this conical tank. But uh, since we have both glycerol and biodiesel in this bucket, we're going to pour the contents. Hold right there. We're going to pour the contents of this bucket to the top of our auxiliary tank. At this time. And we'll just let it settle for a few hours after we mix it. This is the best way to recover all your biodiesel. Without this auxiliary tank, there you go. Without this auxiliary tank, we have a lot of uh, lost biodiesel in this process. This way we can capture the maximum amount. All right. This next, next step is uh, where our system deviates quite a bit from other processes. This is the step where we get our clear vinyl tube. And just to make sure that we get all the glycerol out, we're going to connect this tube to valve 8 on your processor. Right there. And we're going to connect it here to valve number 12. Right like that. We're going to open up valve number 12. And then we're going to close off valve number 9. When we turn on the circulating pump, the pump's going to want to move up everything. So there's a little bit of glycerol still left in the system. We want to close this, this uh, circulating tube off. We're going to close valve number 9 like that. And then we're going to open valve number 8. And notice, you can see some dark, it's a little dark. And what we're going to do, I'll get the ladder for you, I want you to peek into the top of this auxiliary tank here and look at the valve as it comes in. We've got a little, uh, what do you call it, elbow that shoots down into the auxiliary tank. And what we're going to do, right now we have about six, uh, seven gallons total in this auxiliary tank. We're going to pump about five more in there. And this guarantees you get all your uh, glycerol out of your system. So if valve number eight and valve number 10 open, with valve number eight and valve number 12, I mean open, we are now going to turn on our, our uh, circulating pump and it's going to shoot into our auxiliary tank, getting all the glycerol completely out of the system. See how you got kind of a dark color? Well, we're going to see this clear up. And it's already starting to. And we're going to put this about five, we're going to put it out to about 13 to 14. We're at 11, 12, 13. Yeah, it's clear enough, so I think that's about good. In doing that, we're making sure that all of our glycerol is out of the system. And it's going to separate here in this auxiliary tank. 
our next step is going to transfer the rest of the biodiesel, which is pretty much uh, going to be glycerol free, into the wash tank. But this is going to settle. We'll give it about four or five hours of separation to settle time, and we'll come back and look at that. But right now, we're going to close valve number eight, close valve number 12. We're going to get a biodiesel bucket so we don't spill any. Now I'm just going to undo this. Here, and we're going to hook up to our wash tank. The wash tank right now is empty. After processing, you may have some residual water in there. You want to get it as dry as possible. But if there's some residual water, because we use an acid pre-wash, we're going to be A-OK. -okay. So now we're hooked up to the stand pipe. And if you want to look in the top of this wash tank, you can see what I mean. There's a, on the left is our standpipe, and we're going to pump our biodiesel through that wash tank. It's going to come bubble over the top, and we're going to add our acid pre-wash to the bottom here. All right. So the next stage is uh, adding our acid pre-wash. So we're going to do that right now. All right, time to put on our goggles again. Right now we're going to calculate the volume of uh, sulfuric acid we put in our pre-wash. So pre-wash, acid. Recall from our volume of uh, oil we had in the processor, X. That was 121 liters. Our equation for acid is basically X times 1 is going to equal your milliliters of H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid, 93 to 98%. Pretty straightforward. So if we have 121 liters of oil, which we did in this case, we're going to put in 121 milliliters of sulfuric acid. In order to do this, we got our goggles on. We're going to put on our chemical gloves. Sulfuric acid is a really intense acid. So please be careful. You don't want to burn yourself. And if you happen to get some on your skin, use baking soda immediately. It's their best bet, unless you have another base around. But baking soda will be your best neutralizer. Wash, wash, wash. Be careful with water though, because it reacts to water. So baking soda first, neutralize it, then wash your hands. Close, the clothes are ruined. Sorry. <laughs> so we're going to pour 121 milliliters of sulfuric acid into this graduated sink. Exactly. Now, before we introduce our methyl esters to a wash tank, we put the sulfuric acid in there to neutralize uh, any free radicals and stop the formations of soap when we introduce our first wash. This is the best way to do it. There's a lot of ways to break uh, what's called emulsions if they do occur, but this is the best way to prevent them from even happening. So we just take our sulfuric acid and pour it into the bottom of our wash tank. We're going to get a little. Now, always add acid to water, not water to acid. It's key. Just like pool chemicals, think of it that way. You put muriatic acid into your pool, you don't put uh, pool water into your muriatic. And now, we're going to open valve 15. And again, open valve number 8. We're going to restrict 15 about half, just like that. And then we're going to turn on our circulating pump again and transfer the rest of the contents of the processor into the wash tank. 
Now, you, in, in general, you want to do a gentle transition into the wash tank. Uh, but with the acid there, we don't mind the perturbation because it's going to be mixing your uh, biodiesel with that acid pre wash. So this is how the transfer goes, and you just let it go until, uh, until all the methyl esters are fully transferred. Remember that we had some uh, biodiesel isolated here in valve 9. And you see our processor just is not pushing much out anymore. So we're going to turn it off right now. We're going to open up valve number 9. See how it dropped the bottom? Now close valve number 9 again. We want to push all of our contents back in. So we're going to push this back out. and let it kind of snake through there. A couple more pushes. And that's about good. Okay, so we're now evacuating everything out of uh, this, uh, this uh, circulating tube here. And now the pump is struggling to push all the biodiesel into the wash tank. So while I'm gonna have the cameraman turn off valve number 15 simultaneously with me turning off the circuit pump. So I'm going to drop in one, mm -hmm. two, three. And then we close. Valve number eight, two. So 15 or eight are closed, and we're going to recover what's left in this line into this line. Six. Thus recovering our maximum amount of biodiesel out of the system. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but we can already see that on the auxiliary tank, we already have a start of the separation. And we're going to let that separation occur for a number of, number of hours. I'm going to close valve six here in our transfer. Got pretty much all the bodies on this. And the contents of this of this five gallon here seems to be poured directly into the wash tank. And that is how we transfer. And this concludes, well it doesn't conclude it yet, but uh, pretty much that is the nuts and bolts of it. Because we have an acid pre-wash. I have a trusty wooden stick here. Just wanna... You don't want to breathe in here at this time. But right now we're just going to mix them. They've been pretty much mixed really well when we introduced the methyl esters through the standpipe, but this guarantees it. It's like a witch over a cauldron. 
And your little dog, too! But anyways, that's pretty much it. Our acid has been introduced. It's mixing with our methyl esters, preparing us to do a water wash. We're going to let our auxiliary tank sit and separate over the next four hours. And when that is done separating, we're going to pour off an additional five, I don't know, five to ten gallons of uh, methyl esters out of this auxiliary tank that can be then put in the wash tank. That's how we efficiently get our glycerol out of our system and uh, maximize our production of methyl ester. Okay, bye. So we'll see you in a couple hours.